if you're wondering what colours to start with, with watercolour painting, please don't rush out and buy loads of different colours. I'll show you in this video how you can use six colours to mix almost any colour you can imagine and it really is possible to do that. I'm going to be using a split primary palette. So let's get stuck straight in and before I do, please give me a like if you enjoy this video. It helps my channel to grow. It also pushes my video out to more people so that I get found better. Let's get stuck straight in and I hope you enjoy this video. Your primary colours are red, blue and yellow and these can be mixed to create secondary colours which can be mixed to create tertiary colours. So you can get lots of different colour mixes from using red, blue and yellow but you can't use any other colours to mix a red or a blue or a yellow. You need to start out with these colours to mix every other colour. But with paints, there are so many different variations of these colours. It's always a good idea to start off with a set of cool primaries and a set of warm primaries. I'll go through these colours now. So these are my cool primaries. This one is alizarin crimson. You could also use permanent rose or quinacridone magenta instead of alizarin crimson. Then I've got phthalo blue and this is red shade and it's a lovely intense blue. So I'm going to use that as my cool blue and then I've got lemon yellow so you could swap this up for Windsor lemon or cadmium lemon as well and you can also swap the phthalo blue for Prussian blue or phthalo blue green shade as well. This is a good set to start with and I'll show you all my colour combinations with these in a minute to show you that you really don't need more than three paints to get started with painting. And then I've got my warm colours. So I've got my ultramarine, you can use French and ultramarine as well. I've got my cadmium yellow. You can swap this up for New Gamboche or Indian Yellow as well, or Cadmium Yellow Medium. For my primary red, I've got my Cadmium Red, Red Light. So this one is a very nice orangey red. And you can swap this up for Pyrrole Red or Cadmium Scarlet as well. It took me a while to understand why you need a set of warm primaries and a set of cool primaries. And I found this page in my book. I love this colour theory book. I'll link it down below for you. So... It gives you a really good idea of the cool primaries, the warm primaries, and how to mix them as well. So it says the rule of thumb is not to cross this black line here. So for instance, if you wanted to use your Prussian blue with your lemon yellow, mix those two colours and you get this gorgeous green colour. Use your warm yellow with your warm red and you get this gorgeous orange colour. But then if you mixed your warm yellow with your cool red you're going to get probably a more dulled down version of the orange because the cool red has a little bit of blue mixed into it and blue and orange are complementary colors which means if they get mixed together then they they dull each other down so there is method to my madness and this is called a split primary color palette when you use a printer the printer will always have a cyan which is a blue a magenta which is a reddish pink color and then a yellow as well and the printer will use those three colors to make absolutely any color that you can imagine so we're going to use this rule today within our painting phthalo blue is a beautiful intense blue colour. For the yellow we've got lemon yellow so this is my cool set of primaries. So I'll do one page for my cool primaries so we don't get mixed up and then I'll swap the page over and do exactly the same with my warm primaries. Then alizarin crimson as well which is a gorgeous pinkish red colour. If you're looking for some new paints or you just haven't got any paints and you don't know where to start I would definitely recommend Windsor & Newton Cotman colours. They are gorgeous quality. I started as a beginner using these and I still use them every time I paint. So I'm going to show you how you can mix those colours to get any colour that you want. Well, I'm going to start off by showing you that you can mix neutral colours. So if you take your blue and mix in a little bit of alizarin crimson to make a purple. And purple and yellow are opposite on the colour wheel. So if you take your yellow and pop that in, then that's going to help to neutralise it and they dull each other down. So if I put the yellow in, I might have actually popped a little bit too much yellow in there. Um, I'll show you the colour of this though. This is more like a green colour. See, that is a olivey green colour, but you can see that that actually comes out as a duller colour. I'll pop a bit more blue in there and you get more of a green. Phthalo blue is a very intense colour so you only need a, need a little bit. It is very overpowering and it will overpower other colours. So that's why I'll probably need to take a little bit more 
of the alizarin crimson mix that in that should have and it looks like it's made a lovely gray color there we go it's all trial and error have a little play around with the consistency of your paints and use a swatch card like this just get some scrap paper so if I add a little bit of yellow to that now I've put some yellow into that now and I've got that green color again but it's a bit more of a gray green if I add a little bit of blue and I mean I'm just adding a little bit of blue then I'm changing that to a different green can you see how just by using these three colors how we can get lovely neutrals and lots of different color combinations if you mix these colors in equal quantities then you're going to get a lovely color mix I've got the alizarin crimson with the phthalo blue and that's created a lovely purple color so that is a lovely violet and if I just take a bit more blue and pop that into the mixture I've made a darker purple so it's still purple but it's more we've completely changed the hue it's more blue shade if I take a larger amount of the alizarin crimson I can totally change that to more of a red purple so it's more of a burgundy and you can do the same for green as well so if I pop a little bit of lemon yellow into this phthalo blue I can get a nice vibrant green which looks a bit like viridian if I add more yellow to that I can make it more of a yellow tint so it's more of a yellow green but it's like a mid green and I've added more yellow to that again so can you see how just by changing the quantities of the colors you can get different color mixes so I've got more of a yellow green now a nice vibrant yellow green the same goes for mixing alizarin crimson with yellow so I'll show you what color we can get from doing that so we'll have a little play around with mixing your colors you'll see that if you mix three of the primaries together you'll you'll get more of a neutral tint so you'll get a brown or a gray color or sometimes a green like I did it depends on how much of each color you mix so I'm going to pop a little bit of the lemon yellow into um, the alizarin crimson and we're going to end up with an orange so this is a secondary color so by mixing the primaries you end up with a secondary color which is your purple from mixing blue and red your green from mixing blue and yellow and your orange from mixing red and yellow it really doesn't have to be expensive you don't have to start off painting with a huge amount of colors a lot of painters including myself will start off with primary colors because most paint sets will have the primaries in them and then you can go along and add in other colors so I've got a ton of colors and I probably don't need them all but they're more like convenience colors so it just saves me from mixing colors but I know that I could always just use my split primaries and mix those colors or try to mix colors that are very similar so I've just added a little bit more yellow into this so now I'm going to move on to my warm primaries my warm primary blue will be my French ultramarine or my my ultramarine that I've got I haven't got French ultramarine you can use French ultramarine as well and then my warm red will be my cadmium red light so you can see that this is more of a orangey red really and my cadmium yellow is my warm yellow I'm gonna make a grey now so I've got my ultramarine then I've got my cadmium red so this is a mistake that I just made and I was thinking why is this purple so dulled down and I'll show you the reason why so this purple that I've tried to make with the ultramarine and the cadmium red light is not a very nice purple at all you can see it's more like a gray color and the reason for that is because I crossed the line so can you see how we've got my warm ultramarine and then we've crossed the line and mixed it with the warm cadmium red so I should have mixed the warm ultramarine with the cool alizarin crimson now I can see that that is a gorgeous vibrant purple so can you see how by following color theory it helps with your color mixing so I'll show you now that that is so much more of a nicer purple with my other demonstration that I just showed you I probably showed you a bit wrong so I mixed the phthalo blue with the alizarin crimson and it came out with these purples here which to be honest I really like them 
but you'll probably get more of a crisp and fresh look if you mix the phthalo blue with the cadmium red light and I'll try that in a minute for you as well. Mix a bit of phthalo with cadmium red light. I really am not getting any joy at all. This is such a muddy colour. So I just looked at my book, it actually said that if you mix phthalo blue with the cadmium red that you get a muddy colour but you get more of a clean purple if you mix the Fran French ultramarine with the alizarin crimson so we got this gorgeous vibrant purple here so it is all trial and error by using your cool colours and your warm colours you can have a play around and see what colour combinations you like best so I would suggest writing either on top of them when they're dry or writing next to them and then you'll know what colour combinations you've used and you can use these for future use then if I mix some lemon yellow into this mixture here you can see that you get a grey or a brown colour, a neutral colour so I can use that colour for animals or my neutrals so you can see that I really do not need loads of colours if I also mix the French Ultramarine with the Alizarin Crimson, you've got that gorgeous violet again. And then instead of the lemon yellow hue, I'm going to stick in some cadmium yellow. So this is our lovely warm yellow. And then you can see what colour you get out of that. So yellow added to purple will always dull that purple down because they're opposite on the colour wheel, which means they're complementary colours. So you get a brown so can you see how you really do not need to go out and buy a ready mixed brown if i added a little bit more red to that then you get more of a reddish brown and then if i added a bit more red again you get something that might resemble a burnt sienna and then maybe if i add a bit more cadmium yellow to that and you get more of a orangey brown add a bit more blue and you can really change the colour just by mixing or practice mixing your colours. So if I added a little bit more blue to this I'm getting very close to creating a grey. I just added a bit more of the ultramarine and there you go you got your lovely grey colour. If I mix the ultramarine which is our warm blue and take our warm yellow and mix that in you can change it up to green which is our secondary colour which looks a little bit like sap green to me if you added a bit more yellow to that then you can get a lovely yellow green which looks a little bit more like an olive green add more blue to this and you can change the colour again so you can darken it up and you get a lovely dark green so you can see now that by using a set of six colours and it is important to use a warm set of primaries and a cool set of primaries um, and it is for the reasons that I've talked about today because if you mix certain colours, maybe you mix a blue, a warm blue with a cool yellow you might not get a nice bright green or the green that you're looking for but then if you mix your warm blue with your warm yellow you might end up with the nice green that you are looking for so it's always a good idea to start with six colours so you can get a lovely range of colour mixes and colour combinations have a little play around use your sketchbooks use some scrap paper and just have a play around don't ever be afraid of wasting paper just use some cheap paper also remember to record the colors that you've used and the ratio of that color as well so you might put here that you used more ultramarine blue than you used yellow and then you'll know then that's the colour combination you need to use next time if you're looking for that colour again. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments box below if you've got any of these colours. Have a lovely rest of your day. Happy painting and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.